Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. And today I wanted to play around a little bit with some slate tile. This is a very popular medium. You've probably seen me in some of my reviews and testing, uh, trying out slate tile on various lasers. So I thought using the X-Tool F1 with its two types of lasers, both the IR and the blue light laser, that we'd try a few different ways of engraving on the tile, uh, along with a few different ways of preparing the tile, seeing what way comes out the best as far as the contrast and the overall looks. And uh, this is gonna be a bit subjective. Uh, what I like might be different from what the customer likes or what you like, but I thought I'd run some tests on a few different setups and we'll see how they look in the end. So if that's something you're interested in, stay around. We're gonna jump right into it. All right, so we've got the F1 out here and the way I wanna run this test is fairly simple. I've prepared some slate tiles and I've done it in really four different ways. So we're gonna run actually eight tests uh, on the tile because I wanna run it both in the IR as well as the blue laser light. So the first off test is just going to be the straightforward tile. This is straight out of the box how it comes. It's got the natural surface, it's not finished. But with that natural surface, um, as you, if you can see, there's it's just a little rough. There's some texture to it. And that might be something you are looking for. Uh, and it definitely keeps the stone in its most natural state. However, one thing you can do with slate tile is you can sand it. It's best done with a random orbit sander and probably up to a good 120 grit. Uh, but you can sand the top. And then what you end up with is a much more smooth surface. Uh, this one probably needs just a little more polishing on there, but uh, that takes the texture away, but it keeps it a natural stone. And what that can do is just help even it out. And so if you're going for a really detailed photo engrave or very crisp lines, uh, just not having that variation of the texture can help. Well, then another thing that people like to do is then take their tiles and they'll pre-finish them. So this is an example of the plain tile. But what I've done is I've added a a layer of satin polyurethane. This is just a spray on finish. And uh, the thing is you, you do want to kind of get around the edges and uh, finish it all off. Otherwise there will be a little variation of color there, but you just let that dry and then you engrave and it, it helps add a little bit darker tint to the slate as well as it makes your colors just pop a little bit more. It makes the engraving be just a little bit more white. So we want to try it on there. And then finally I have some tiles that are sanded and finished. And so you get that fairly smooth top to it. And then you'll also get that higher contrast. So those are the four tests we're gonna run. But very first, what I need to do is I need to run some material tests on the X-Tool, both in the IR mode, as well as in the blue light mode. And uh, from there, we're going to see which ones look best on just the straight up test. And that's gonna be our kind of our baseline speeds. Then we'll run it through all of the different styles of tiles. So let's run those uh, material tests first, and then we'll see where we look, our, where our numbers are gonna be, and then we'll get to the other tests. So let's jump into the lasering. All right, so I've brought you in close here to look at both of these tiles. So the one on the left side here was done with the blue laser and the one on the right was done uh, with the IR. Both of these were run in XCS. Um, and so the top test is power and lines at 500 speed. And then we're adjusting the line interval and the power interval. And then the bottom one is power and speed at 200 lines per centimeter. So um, we're adjusting the speed as we go down and we're adjusting the power as we go up. So as you can see between these two, when we get into the lower speeds here at 80 to even 300, 400, um, we're getting some yellowing. 
But when you get up uh, above that around up here, you see the 500 and we get some yellowing at the deeper lines, but around 200 and 100 power or so, that's where we're kind of getting probably our best even engraving. It's about as white as we can probably get it with this. And so I think that is going to be roughly our baseline there. So we're going to be um, doing all of our blue light tests in that. And then here you see our IR tests. So same parameters up top. We have power lines differentiating, but staying at 500 speed. And then down to the bottom, we've got, we're adjusting our power and speed going from 80 on up to 3000. And as you hopefully can see here, we're getting some very, very white colors here down in the slower speeds, 200 lines per centimeter. So, you know, anywhere from speed 80, and that's uh, 80 millimeters a second, up to uh, speed 120 at 100% power. They're all fairly similar, and we're getting very, very white colors. And the one thing you'll notice if I hold these close together is the there's definitely a, a brighter white coming out of the IR. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays through all of our tests. And also concerning in that it is much slower, so we'll see how long the file takes running at that slow speed. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to run all the tests between blue light and then the IR, and then we'll get all of our tiles out and take a look at them all. All right, so we completed all of our tests. I have the two stacks back here um, and uh, we'll look at them real quickly here. But the interesting thing, and as I kind of figured out with our speed and power tests, is that the IR laser definitely took longer per tile. So the blue light laser um, was completing these in four minutes, 25 seconds. Again, that was running at 500 millimeters per second, 200 lines per centimeter and 100% power. Whereas the IR laser, we were running at the same 200 lines per centimeter, uh, still running at 100 power, but we were running it at 120 millimeters per second speed. So almost four times uh, as slow as we were running the blue light laser. So obviously that took longer. Those were taking 16 minutes and 51 seconds. Um, that's, that's one thing that we're going to want to take into account. But either way, both files were kind of running the same pattern. So if we can run the blue light laser at 500 millimeters a second versus the IR at 120 to get our desired effect. No matter how we kind of break that file up and try to uh, improve the speed, there's going to be a four times difference between the two. So uh, just an interesting thing I noticed, um, but uh, let's take a look at the various tiles. All right, so the very first tile we're going to look at is the natural slate tile. And so I have them here. The one on my right, so probably your left, is going to be the uh, IR lens and the one on this side here on your right, my left, is going to be the blue light laser. So they are very similar, but you should notice that the IR one did have just a little more contrast, a little more brilliant white. Uh, other than that, they both filled in the, the logo quite well. Uh, obviously with the natural slate tile, you might have some ridges and valleys that are gonna cause some minor imperfections. Um, so that's where you may want to look at pre-sanding and smoothing that out if you want a really crisp look. But if you want the more natural look with just the engraving, um, this is how you're probably going to want to go. And so if I can 
angle those right, you might just be able to see that texture. But again, hopefully you can kind of tell, and I'm trying to hold them at different angles just to make sure that it's not so much the light, but there is a fairly pronounced difference in the brighter white of the IR versus the blue light laser. So, um, but both of them did well. And like I said, the blue light laser much faster. So if you're not looking for that brilliant white, you're definitely gonna gain a little advantage here on the speed. All right, now jumping into the sanded tile, very similar, similar look. Again, the IR on this side, the blue light laser here, and you can just kind of see again that variation between just a little more grayish look to a little more whitish look uh, on these two. Um, but there are no real uh, texture to it, and so you get a very crisp engraving. Um, this would probably show up more if you were doing a photorealistic engraving, having it smooth versus textured when you're doing more of a vector such as my logo here, it's not gonna be as noticeable. But again, just kind of looking at the colors, and as you see, maybe in this one, there are a few spots there that are kind of showing through, uh, and that's just from some imperfections in the tile. As I sand it down, sometimes you get just little, little chips and such that come out, and so that can have an effect on there. All right, now we're gonna jump into our tiles we finished with polyurethane. So again, these were pre-finished. I uh, sprayed a couple coats on uh, the, the day before, let them fully cure overnight, and then we burned them today. So here is, again, we got our IR over here. We've got our blue light laser over here. And again, you're just kind of seeing that slight color variation pop through. But now with the finished look, you get a little bit darker slate tile look to it. And then again, you're gonna have your texture. And as I kind of lean it back, you'll see where that uh, polyurethane's showing a little bit. And for me, I, I went with the satin because I don't really like that heavy glossy look. Um, some people might like that, but I, it just looks too wet and too almost artificial at that point for me. Um, even this is pushing it a little bit, but again, that's subjective. It, what I like might not be what your customer like or what you like. So again, uh, some of this is just to kind of give an idea of how they look. And if I hold up the, see, this is the natural one versus, this is both the blue light laser, the natural versus the, uh, the polyurethane one, you know, it, there's subtle differences, but there's definitely a contrast. You can tell this one is darker, the tile is darker. The coloring is just a little bit different on the engraving, but that's that'll kind of help your image or your logo pop out of the tile a little bit more. And finally, we have the sanded polyurethane tiles. Here they are again, IR on this side, blue light on this side, and hopefully this here you can see that by sanding it down, you definitely get a very smooth finish. And so that just makes everything that much more crisp. Um, so it's just going to, you're gonna lose a little bit of that natural stone look, both from the sanding and from the finishing, but it makes the color pop and it makes the lines very, very crisp. So again, that might be something you're looking for. Um, I do also wanna try this with maybe a more of a uh, raster photo type engraving to see how that would look. Um, but I, this is starting to grow on me. I, I used to not really like the finished look. It made the stone um, kind of look a little less, you know, look, look a little more processed, maybe maybe more manufactured than natural. Um, but it's also a look that's okay. Now, there are going to be the arguments that you're taking away some of the absorption properties of the tile. Slate has a slight absorption uh, capability to it but it's really meant to be non-permeable. It's used in roofing and such, so it'll help a little bit. Um, and then by finishing it, obviously it's not gonna be able to absorb anything. I mean, if you finished it right, it should just kind of pull on there. So you're, you're losing a little bit of that coaster effect, but generally these are gonna be more artistic and more about keeping the heat and the moisture right off of your surface. And hopefully you're catching it before it gets uh, super pooled up on here. So, you know, that's something to kind of just take into consideration is are these really going to be dealing with super wet drinks that you, the surface they're sitting on really needs to be protected. Then maybe you want to keep them natural versus finishing them. But if you want that image to really pop here again, here's the, here's the finished one sanded. And let's see if we can grab the, got to find it now. This is the unfinished one. So, you know, it just makes that tile, that slate tile, a little bit darker, which brings out the engraving just a bit more. So um, 
that's uh, that that may be the look you're going for. All right, I'm going to leave this video here. Hopefully, this was some useful information for you, or at least you uh, learned a little bit more about the Xtool F1. Uh, again, this is a fun laser. Uh, it's very portable. It has multiple options of engraving, and as you can see, we're able to get some different styles out of the two different wavelengths, and uh, where that that may help you dial in the look you're going for. So. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this, go ahead and leave that down below. And uh, if you thought this was useful, hit that thumbs up. And if this is your first time here and you like what you saw, hey, consider hitting that subscribe button. Really appreciate it and helps this channel out. Uh, also, if you wanna follow more about what I'm doing, I do have links to my Facebook page and my Instagram page down below. Always trying to grow those as well. And I do try to throw out some tips, tricks, and just behind the scenes out there. So if you wanna see more of what's going on in my workshop in between videos, check those out as well. I will have a few links down below to things like the tiles, the laser and such, if you're interested in picking some of these up for yourself. Uh, always appreciate you using them. They do provide a little kickback to this channel, help support what I'm doing here. But as always, no pressure. I'm just trying to offer up some good information. So thanks again for stopping by. Uh, always appreciate the community around here. Uh, I hope you find it useful. But uh, most importantly, I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.